The Battle of Delville Wood was a series of engagements in the 1916 Battle of the Somme in the First World War, between the armies of the German Empire and the British Empire. Delville Wood was a thick tangle of trees, chiefly beech and hornbeam, with dense hazel thickets, intersected by grassy rides. To the east of Longueval, as part of a general offensive starting on 14 July, which became known as the Battle of Bazenton Ridge, General Douglas Haig, commander of the British Expeditionary Force, intended to capture the German second position between Delville Wood and Bazenton Le Petit. The attack achieved this objective and was a considerable though costly success. British attacks and German counter-attacks on the wood continued for the next seven weeks, until just before the Battle of Flores Corslet, the third British general attack in the Battle of the Somme. The 1st South African Infantry Brigade made its Western Front DE acute BUT as part of the 9th Division and captured Delville Wood on 15 July. The South Africans held the wood until 19 July, at a cost in casualties similar to those of many British brigades on 1 July. When captured, the village and wood formed a salient, which could be fired on by German artillery from three sides. The ground rose from Bernafay and Trones was to the middle of the village and neither the village or the wood could be held without the other. After the Battle of Bazenton Ridge, the British tried to advance on both flanks to straighten the salient at Delville Wood, to reach good jumping-off positions for a general attack. The Germans tried to eliminate the salient and to retain the ground, which shielded German positions from view and overlooked British positions. For the rest of July and August, both sides fought for control of the wood and village but struggled to maintain the tempo of operations. Ammunition shortages, high casualties and wet weather, which reduced visibility and made the movement of troops and supplies much more difficult. Both sides were reduced to piecemeal attacks and piecemeal defense on narrow fronts, except for a small number of bigger and wider front attacks. Until early September, most attacks were defeated by defensive firepower and the inclement weather, which frequently turned the battlefield into a slough of mud. Delville Wood is well preserved with the remains of trenches a museum and a monument to the South African Brigade at the Delville Wood South African National Memorial. Background Strategic developments in 1916 The Franco-British had absorbed the lessons of the failed breakthrough offensives of 1915 and abandoned attempts to break the German front in a sudden attack. As the increased depth of German defences had made this impossible, attacks were to be limited, conducted over a wide front, preceded by artillery, preparation, and made by fresh troops. Grignotage was expected to lead to the crumbling of German defences. The offensive was split between British and Dominion forces in the north and the French in the south. After two weeks of battle, the German defenders were holding firm in the north and centre of the British sector, where the advance had stopped except for the battles for Ovillas and Contail-Maison. There had been substantial Anglo-French gains from the Ancre River southwards. The British attacks after the 1st of July and the rapid French advance on the south bank led Falkenhayn on the 2nd of July to order that. The first principle in position warfare must be to yield not one foot of ground and if it be lost to retake it by immediate counter-attack, even to the use of the last man. And next day, General Fritz von Below issued an order of the day forbidding voluntary withdrawals. The outcome of the war depends on the Second Army being victorious on the Somme. The enemy must be made to pick his way forward over corpses. After his chief of staff General Paul Gruno and the corps commander General Gunther von Panowitz were sacked for ordering the 17th Corps to withdraw to the third position, Falkenhayn ordered a strict defensive at Verdun on 12 July and the transfer of more troops and artillery to the Somme front, which was the first strategic success of the Anglo-French offensive. By the end of July, finding reserves for the German defense of the Somme caused serious difficulties for Falkenhayn, who ordered an attack at Verdun intended to pin down French troops. 
The Brusilov offensive continued and the German Eastern armies had to take over more of the front from the Austro-Hungarians. When Brody fell on 28 July, to cover Lemberg, Russian attacks were imminent along the Stokod River. The Austro-Hungarian armies were in a state of disarray and Konrad von Hotzendorf, the Austro-Hungarian chief of the general staff, was reluctant to take troops from the Italian front. When the Italian army was preparing another offensive and where the Italian Sixth Battle of the Isenzo began on 6 August, tactical developments on 19 July, the German Second Army was split and a new First Army was established to command the German divisions north of the Somme. The Second Army kept the South Bank under General Max von Galwurz from Verden who was also made commander of Army Gruppe Galwitz Somme with authority over Below and the First Army. Losberg remained as the First Army Chief of Staff and Bronze at von Skellendorf took over in the Second Army. Skellendorf advocated a counter-offensive on the South Bank, which was rejected by Falkenhayn. Because forces released from the Verdun front were insufficient, five divisions having been sent to the Russian front in July. On 21 July, Falkenhayn ruled that no more divisions could be removed from quiet fronts for the Somme until exhausted divisions could relieve them and that he needed seven fought out divisions to replace those already sent to the Somme front. Galwurz began to reorganize the artillery in curtailed harassing and retaliatory fire, to conserve ammunition for defensive fire during Anglo-French attacks. From 16 the 22nd of July 32 heavy gun and howitzer batteries arrived on the Somme and five reconnaissance flights, three artillery flights, three bombing flights and two fighter squadrons reached the area. Since 1 July, 13 fresh divisions had arrived on the north bank of the Somme and three more were ready to join the defence. The strain on the German defenders on the Somme grew worse in August and unit histories are made frequent reference to high losses and companies being reduced to 80 men before relief. Many German divisions came out of a period on the Somme front with at least 4,500 casualties and some German commanders suggested a change to the policy of unyielding defence by lightly holding the front line, with reserves further back in a defensive zone but this had little effect on the losses caused by the Anglo-French artillery. Movement behind the German front was so dangerous that regiments carried rations and water for a four- to five-day tour with them. Behind the line, construction work on new rear lines was constant. Despite shortages of materials and rail lines becoming overloaded with troop trains, supply trains were delayed and stations near the front were bombarded by artillery and by aircraft. The local light railways were insufficient and lorries and carts were pressed into use using roads which, while paved, needed constant maintenance, which was difficult to ensure with the troops available. The German artillery suffered many losses and the number of damaged guns exceeded the repair capacity of workshops behind the front. Inferior ammunition exploded prematurely, bursting gun barrels. Destruction, wear and tear from the 26th of June the 28th of August, led to 1,068 of the 1,208 field guns and 371 of the 820 heavy guns in the Army Gruppe being lost. The Anglo-French maintained air superiority but German air reinforcements began to arrive by mid-July. More artillery was sent to the Somme but until the reorganization and centralization of artillery control had been completed, counter-battery fire, barrage fire in cooperation with aircraft remained inadequate. Galwurz considered plans for a relief attack but lack of troops and ammunition made it impractical, particularly after 15 July, when Falkenhayn withheld more fresh divisions and the 1st Army had to rely on the 2nd Army for reinforcements. In early August, an attempt was made to use Landsturm men over 38 years old, who proved a danger to themselves and were withdrawn. Prelude 
British offensive preparations British attacks south of the road between Albert and Bapaume began on 2 July. Despite congested supply routes to the French 20th Corps and the British 13th, 15th and 3rd Corps, La Bosle near the road was captured on 4 July. Bernafay and Caterpillar Woods were occupied from 3 to 4 July and then fighting to capture Trones Wood. Mumette Wood and Contail Maison took place until early on 14 July. As German reinforcements reached the Somme front, they were thrown into battle piecemeal and had many casualties. Both sides were reduced to improvised operations, which were hurried and poorly organized. Troops who were unfamiliar with the ground had little time for reconnaissance and were supported by artillery which was poorly coordinated with the infantry and sometimes fired on ground occupied by friendly troops. British attacks in this period have been criticized as uncoordinated, tactically crude and wasteful of manpower, which gave the Germans an opportunity to concentrate their inferior resources on narrow fronts. The Battle of Bazentin Ridge was planned as a joint attack by 15th and 13th Corps, whose troops would assemble in no man's land in darkness and attack at dawn after a five-minute hurricane bombardment. Haig was skeptical of the plan but eventually accepted the views of Rawlinson and the Corps commanders, Lieutenant Generals H. Horn and W. N. Congreve. Preparatory artillery bombardments began on the 11th of July and on the night of 13-14 July, British troops advanced stealthily across no man's land, which in parts was 1,200 yards wide, to within 300 to 500 yards of the German front line and then crept forward. At 3.20 a.m., the hurricane bombardment began and the British began to run forward. On the right flank the 18th Division captured Troneswood in a subsidiary operation and the 9th Division was repulsed from Waterlot Farm but on the left got into Delville Wood. The 21st, 7th and 3rd Divisions on the left flank took most of their objectives. By mid-morning 6,000 yards of the German second position had been captured. Cavalry had been sent forward and the German defenders thrown into chaos. Longerval and Delville Wood The village of Longerval enclosed a crossroads which ran southwest to Montaubin, west to the two Byzantines, north to Flores and east to Ginchy. South African forces used the English place names in Longerval and Delville Wood, as they were more meaningful than French terms. Palmal led north from Montauban and Bernafay Wood to the crossroads on the southern fringe of the village, where Sloan Street branched to the west, to a junction with Clarges Street and Pont Street. Dover Street led to the southeast and met a track running north from Trones Wood. Two roads converged on Pall Mall at the main square. North Road ran between Flores and Highwood, with a path to the west meeting Pont Street, which ran into Highwood and the second road ran southeast to Guillemont. Clarges Street ran west from the village square to Bazenton Le Grand and Prince's Street ran east through the middle of Delville Wood. Parallel to Clarges Street, about 300 yards further north, ran Duke Street. Both bounded on the west by Pont Street and by Piccadilly on the east side. Orchards lay between Piccadilly and North Street, beyond which Flores Road forked to the right, skirting the northwest edge of Delville Wood. The wood lay north of the D20 Road, west of Ginchy and the northwest edge was adjacent to the D197 Flores Road. Delville Wood was bounded on the southern edge by South Street, which was linked to Prince's Street by Buchanan Street to the west, Campbell Street in the center and King Street to the east, three parallel rise which face north. Running east from Buchanan Street and parallel to Prince's Street was Rotten Row. On the north side of Prince's Street ran Strand, Regent Street and Bond Street, three rides to the northern fringe of the wood. British plans of attack General Sir Henry Rawlinson, commander of the 4th Army ordered Congreve to use 13th Corps to capture Longueval, while the 15th Corps of Lieutenant General Henry Horne was to cover the left flank. Rawlinson wanted to advance across no man's land at night for a dawn attack after a hurricane bombardment to gain surprise. 
Haig opposed the plan because of doubts about inexperienced new army divisions assembling on the battlefield at night. Haig eventually deferred to Rawlinson and the corps commanders after modifications to their plan. An advance to Longueval could not begin until Troneswood was in British possession as it dominated the approach from the south. The capture of Longueval would then require the occupation of Delville Wood on the northeastern edge of the town. If Delville Wood was not captured German artillery observers could overlook the village and German infantry would have an ideal jumping-off point for attacks on Longueval. A British advance would deepen the salient already formed to the northeast of Montauban but also assist British attacks to the south on Gintian, Gilly Montan on High Wood to the northwest. The 9th Scottish Division was to attack Longueval and the 18th Eastern Division under Major General Ivor Maxey on the right was to occupy Trones. Wood, the commander of the 9th Division, Major General W.T. First, ordered that the Longueval attack be led by the 26th Brigade. The 8th Black Watch and the 10th Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders would lead with the 9th Seaforth Highlanders in support and the 5th Cameron Highlanders in reserve. The 27th Brigade would follow on to mop up any bypass German troops and reinforce the leading battalions once they had entered the village. Once Longueval had been secured, the 27th Brigade was to pass through the 26th to take Delville Wood. The 1st South African Brigade was to be kept in reserve. German defensive preparations despite considerable debate among German staff officers. Falkenhayn based defensive tactics in 1916 on unyielding defense and prompt counter-attacks when ground had been lost. On the Somme front Falkenhayn's construction plan of January 1915 had been completed by early 1916. Barbed wire obstacles had been enlarged from one belt 5 to 10 yards wide to 2, 30 yards wide and about 15 yards apart. Double and triple thickness wire was used and laid 3 to 5 feet high. The front line had been increased from one line to 3, 150 to 200 yards apart. The first trench occupied by sentry groups, the second for the front trench garrison and the third trench for local reserves. The trenches were traversed and had sentry posts in concrete recesses built into the parapet. Dugouts had been deepened from 6 to 9 feet to 20 to 30 feet, 50 yards apart and large enough for 25 men. An intermediate line of strong points about 1,000 yards behind the front line was also built. Communication trenches ran back to the reserve line, renamed the second line, which was as well built and wired as the first line. The second line was beyond the range of Allied field artillery. To force an attacker to stop and move field artillery forward before assaulting the line, the German front line lay along the old third position, which in this area ran from the southern edge of Bazenton Le Grand to the south fringe of Longueval and then curved southeast past Waterlot Farm in Guillemont. An intermediate line ran roughly parallel behind Delville Wood on a reverse slope, the wood being on a slight ridge which extended east from the village. Longueval had been fortified with trenches, tunnels, concrete bunkers and had two field guns. The village was garrisoned by the divisions of 4th Corps and the 3rd Guard Division. The north and northwest was held by Thuringian Infantry Regiment 72 of the 8th Division. In and around Delville Wood, an area of about 0.5-square mile, which abutted the east side of Longueval and extended to within 0.5-mile of Ginchy, were Infantry Regiment 26 of the 7th Division, Thuringian Infantry Regiment 153 and Infantry Regiment 107. A British attack would have to advance uphill from Bernafay and Troneswoods across terrain with a similar shape to a funnel, broad in the south and narrowing towards Longueval in the north. Armand suspected that an attack would begin on 13 or 14 July. 